Well, as you can tell, I'm dressed in my Chavant clothing, pants, <laughs> shirt, and a hat. Ah, don't expect me to dress like this every day, but I just figured I would. Um, a while ago, um, I did this clay as a demonstration uh, for the use of uh, this Le Bon Touche uh, by Chavant uh, Plastiline. It uh, is a two pound block. Um, anyway, it's a high melt or HM clay. And that means that it takes very high temperatures to uh, uh, melt that clay. And I did soften it with under a 100 watt bulb, but it took a while to get the clay soft. Uh, but this is perfect clay if you're in a tropic area where it's hot and uh, or down south uh, in the United States where it gets really hot. It's a clay that you can work and it won't get too soft or sticky. So uh, this clay I did uh, a while back and I'm going to show you the video of that demo now. I asked uh, Sculpture Depot to send me samples of clay and uh, they did and she sent me of uh, Chavant uh, uh, Le Beau Touche I guess it is. I, I'm not certain how you pronounce that French uh, name. Um, and so I thought I'd take a look at these clays. What I thought I'd do is do a little demonstration with uh, one of these clays, the one that, the one that feels the best to my hands. And so this sounds like a very good deal here. I like the gray color too. But anyway, I'm gonna sculpt a bust just to uh, experiment with this clay and see how well it works. All right, I noticed one thing. The clay doesn't have a real smell to it. I mean. It has a slight smell, but not offensive smell. I, it, some clays overwhelm you with uh, their smell. All right, I'm going to... I uh, don't know what I'm going to do yet. I just thought I'd do something as a demonstration. Now the damn camera went off, and I didn't know what... I don't know where it went off at, but... Uh, I'll just have to pick it up wherever it is that it left off. I never know. If, if I'm not listening, I won't hear the uh, little beep beep when it shuts itself off. It only has a 20 minute uh, time frame. Alright, I'm just uh, adding clay. I, I The camera went off and I didn't realize it until uh, I was well into the presenting of this piece. But uh, what I start out with, uh, I start out with a profile and then I just start building up the sides of the uh, head. Here I'm just taking the measurements to plot out the eye sockets and and stuff like that. Um, I apologize for the lack of video on the beginning of this because, well, I didn't hear the little beep when the camera turned itself off. <laughs> anyway, still not sure what I'm going to do. I think what I'm going to do is a maybe an old mountain man head. I haven't done a mountain man in a long time. And it just feels good to take a little break from uh, what I've been working on to just do something a little different for a, a day. For those of you who watch a lot of my videos, you see that I always start with a nose after I've dug out the uh, eye socket. And I'm just establishing kind of like the personality of whatever it is I'm thinking about doing. I had this clay under the light and I'm telling you it would normally be completely melted but it's very soft it's very pliable it feels great in the hand I like this clay you do have to study anatomy if you want to uh, sculpt something that looks like a human being what I'm using right now is this uh, model that I bought it's it's part of a full figure that's uh, a half skeleton and and half uh, muscle and uh, it really helps in uh, seeing and and as a reference for uh, the size. Now this is 
this is the uh, size I'm making is what I'm looking at right here. So I'm scaling it to the size of the actual uh, model of the head and I saw already that I just have to increase the top of his head just a little bit ago. It, it, I mean, the better your your uh, reference material, the better your work will be. It's just like the tools that you use. The better the tools, the better your your sculptures will be, or your paintings will be, or your drawings will be. Everything depends on tools. Now, see, I'm intending to do a beard on this guy, and that, for that reason, I'm not going into great detail on the lips and the mouth because there's no need because it'll all be covered by the the mustache. Once again I'm using the uh, Chivant high melt uh, clay. What I'm going to create with this is uh, just basically what the two, t two pound block uh, allows me to create. And uh, we'll see how much of this I'm just locking in the eyeball here.
Well, that gives you an idea what you can do with two pounds of clay. And this is how much of that two pound block I have left right here. As I said, I worked on this a while back and uh, I want to show you that uh, this clay, no matter how long it's been sitting out in the dry or out in my studio, in the back, it uh, still is malleable and uh, no uh, surface has built up on it of uh, a crusty nature uh, such as Roma clay would do. Uh, it's a non-sulfuric clay, I think. It doesn't say here, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's a non-sulfuric clay. Um, it's like it says, it's a high melt clay, which means it takes high temperature to uh, melt this. I, I, let me tell you a little history of uh, Chavant. Uh, they've been around since 1892. Well, the it was invented, this, this plastiline clay, and that's a trademarked uh, name. Uh, it was trademarked by Chavant in uh, 1927. Um, this clay was developed, or the Chavant uh, clay was developed by a chemist by the name of Claude Chavant in 1892. And uh, so it, they've been around a long, long time. Probably one of the older uh, clay companies uh, in the world. And uh, they can distribute uh, all over the world. Uh, I know they have a uh, link on their website to uh, all the different uh, outlets that sell their, their work or their product. All right, that's it for today, and uh, we'll be doing another clay review at another time.